let's take a look at the clone stamp. Pop into the folder called retouching and open up the image called stampdemo.psd. Anybody know the keyboard shortcut to get to the clone stamp? Hit S on the keyboard and it will take you to this little tool that looks like a rubber stamp. Now, how does this tool work? Or how do you work this tool? Well, it's kind of a two-step process. If you just click, it was going to say, well, you can't use the clone stamp because the area to clone has not been defined. You have to define a source. And it says to option click to define a source point. So let's define a source. Let's say I wanted to take this X and make a copy of it or a clone of it somewhere else. Well, it said to hold the option key, or if you're on Windows, it'll be Alt. When you hold the option key, look at that, you get this little bullseye like you're about to shoot at the X there. When that bullseye is active, the click that you do, boink, will define the source and then let go of option. A lot of people think that they need to keep that option key held down and then they go somewhere else and they click and basically just define a new source. So figure out what you want to move, hold down the option key and click on it. So that has defined a source. And depending how your Photoshop is set up, you might notice that it'll bring this little preview with you. This is showing where that X would go if you were to click there. This will be showing where your destination is. So let's say I wanted to put the X right here. I click, boink, and huh. I had a soft edge brush and it stuck the X there, but it missed some of the edges. Not a problem. Watch this. If I click again and start dragging around, well, first off, take a look at the original X. Do you see that plus sign moving around on that original X on the right? That is my source. The circle, the cursor at the top left there is the destination. Does that make sense? Uh, let's try this again. Uh, let's move a, a red dot somewhere else. So hit S on the keyboard. Make sure you have this little clone stamp tool there. Looks like that rubber stamp that they use at banks where they stamp it on the ink pad and then stamp it on the paper. And you can make multiple copies of stuff, just like this tool. So call up the clone stamp, hold down the option key, and you'll get that little bullseye. Let's stick it right on that red dot and click, doink, and then let go of option. Then move somewhere else and click again. And just paint around. You can see that plus sign up on the top right circle, that red circle there, that's the source. And the circle in the bottom left, that's my brush, that's the destination. Take a look on the screen and let me know if anything goes tragically wrong. I have decided that I really like the letter W and I'm like, look at this beautiful W. I'm gonna take this W and I'm gonna copy it over to here. So I'm gonna hold down the option key, just like I'm supposed to, and boink, I've clicked on the W. Then I move over to here. Oh, I can see the little preview of what it's gonna do. I click, I start rubbing it around. You can see that little plus sign. There's my source, making a little W there. So far, so, uh-oh, what's, th what's that? What happened? <gasps> There's a slash beside it. And look at what happened. When I started cloning here, that plus sign, it didn't hit the slash, but you notice that my brush on the left side, remember when you're working with a soft brush, it's full intensity in the center and it fades out to nothing just outside the edge and <gasps> it included a little bit of that slash there. That can cause problems. Let's say you're picking out blemishes on somebody's face and you're sampling good skin, you're cloning it over top of the blemish, and then your source gets too close to, say, a nostril, and it clones a nostril onto their cheek. Do people have nostrils on their cheeks? Not typically. Um, so be careful that stuff like this isn't happening. Always take a good look around and, and make sure that your source is away from stuff that could get picked up and dropped somewhere else. Okay, so spend a few minutes, play around with this, make X's, see if you can get rid of that dot. See if you can take some white and stick it over top of that. Pretend that's a blemish and destroy it. Okay, you guys ready to try it on an actual photograph? Yeah. I mean, it's one thing on a white background, but let's try it on an actual picture. So close that up. You don't need to save anything, as exciting as that was. Open up the image called cloningpractice.jpg. And there's a person there on a white background. Um, and uh-oh, if you look over her shoulder on the background there, there's a little a little smudgy thing. I think a fly flew into the wall at, a, at high speed. Let's take that clone stamp. And if I was just trying to get rid of this little dot here, is this a good size brush to use? No. 
It's probably a bit big, isn't it? For the most part, you want to disturb or disrupt as few pixels as possible. So I'm going to take a brush that's about the same size as that problem there. And it's a white background, right? So it doesn't really matter where I sample from. Take a look on the screen for a second. I'm going to grab some of this white over here, boink, and I'm just going to throw it, oh, for top. What happened? It, it's too bright, isn't it? Well, OK, I'll come from this side over here and, oh. What it, what's going on on the background there? Why is that not working so well? It starts with a G. We have a, oh, there's a gradient from light to dark. I mean, sure, it's a white background, but the way the light's falling on it, it's lighter here than it is here. And there are basically only gradients in a photograph. Like if I was trying to clone on the skin here, we have darker, lighter, darker, lighter, lighter, darker, lighter, darker. There's gradients everywhere. And you have to respect those gradients. Like let's say I was trying to get rid of this dot here. Well clearly coming from this bright side is going to cause problems. Coming from the dark side is going to cause problems. But what if I went perpendicular to the gradient? What if I said, okay, this isn't going to work. It's too bright. This isn't going to work. It's too dark. But what if I came from here? And I just rub that over top. That works out pretty good. Or even from above. That works out pretty good. Give that a try. Destroy that little dot in the back wall. OK. Now, here's, here's a thing, guys. What if you did a great job there, and then you did a great job here, and you're retouching the face, and then you really messed up something? And you're like, oh, crap. I've really messed that up. What's good practice before you start doing retouching? A layer. A layer. What kind of layer? Duplicate. That's an option. Um, I could take this layer, drag it down onto the new layer icon, and that would make a duplicate of it. But personally, I prefer to work on a transparent layer. And I'll show you why. Now, I'm just going to revert out of this just to get back to the original version. If you go under File Revert, it undoes all the changes that you did. And I could make a duplicate of the layer. I could grab this layer, drag it onto the new layer icon, or I could simply do a Command J. We'll make a duplicate of the layer. And then I could clone this out. Um, see there's a little thread in her elbow? I could clone that out. And let's say I'd spent hours doing a great job on everything, and then accidentally I cloned an eyeball onto her forehead. I'm like, oh crap, I cloned an eyeball onto her forehead. To undo that, I'd have to go back to my bottom layer here. I'd have to get the pixels, bring it to the top. It'd be a pain in the butt, wouldn't it? But what if instead, so let me revert back out of this, I made a transparent layer. And I took my clone stamp, and I grabbed this dot, and I got rid of it. Maybe I did a great job there. did a bunch of stuff on the dress. I got rid of this little thread down here, doing a great job. And then I accidentally uh, cloned her nose onto her cheek. And we've established earlier that people don't have that. And I'm like, oh no, what am I going to do? Um, well, look at this. If I turn off the background layer, there's where that little dot was. I took some pixels from here, and I stuck it over top. Here's where the thread was. I took some pixels from here, and I stuck it over top. And oh, there's a nose up there. No problem. If I hit E on the keyboard, I can get to my eraser tool, and I can simply go and get rid of that little problem. And I don't have to have that layer visible. Like I've got the bottom layer turned on, and I know that this is my retouching layer. I'm like, oh crap, there's a nose on her cheek. And I go, eh, 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 get rid of it. Hit S on the keyboard, and I'm right back to cloning around. So it's a convenient way of undoing something that you mess up. So if I really messed up like on the, the shoulder here, no problem, erase, take it off of there, hit S, and I'm right back to cloning around. Give that a try. Revert back, file, revert. Make a new transparent layer and try your clone stamp on it and let me know if anything goes tragically wrong. Oh, it doesn't work, does it? Anybody know why yours isn't working but mine is? You'll notice at the very top, your clone stamp says current layer. And you'll notice that that current layer is transparent. There are no pixels on it. So you're taking transparent and cloning it onto transparent. Zero plus zero is zero. But if you were to go to current and below, it would be sampling the bottom layer and bringing it up to the top. So you could sample that bottom layer with the lips there, and you could stick those on the forehead. So give that a try. Make sure it's set to current and below. So working on that transparent layer just makes it that much easier to go back and undo stuff. So give it a try. Just some cloning around. Fix that little thread by the elbow there. Doesn't have to be useful. Stick an eyeball on her forehead, whatever. Just figure out how that tool works.
Option defines your source, and the next click after will define your destination.